Welcome to 28storms.com and the Hurricane Tracker app. This is your update for Saturday afternoon, August 4th. And as we begin with the wide view of the Atlantic Basin, we see that Tropical Storm Florence has formed to the west of the Cape Verde Islands. But Florence is likely to be no threat to land as it's going to recurve out to sea. Also, the system that first popped up yesterday near Florida is still being given a 10% chance of development but it does not look like the system will develop into a tropical depression or tropical storm. So the focus continues to be on tropical storm Ernesto as it begins to intensify in the Central Caribbean. As of the 5 p.m. Eastern Time Advisory from the Hurricane Center, maximum sustained winds have increased once again to 60 miles per hour, and a tropical storm warning is in effect for all of Jamaica, although the official forecast track, at least for now, is taking the center of circulation just to the south of the island. And as we move towards days 4 and 5, we see that the Hurricane Center is forecasting a hurricane landfall just to the south of Cancun in Cozumel, Mexico. And if you go ahead and take a look at the discussion, they are forecasting a maximum intensity of 90 miles per hour while it's still in the West Caribbean, making this an upper end Category 1 hurricane. And by day 5, they're still splitting the difference between some of the models that are taking the storm more toward the north into the Central Gulf and some of the more southerly models which are barely even taking the system into the Bay of Campeche. Until we begin to see some consistency and better agreement within the models as far as the intensity and the track is concerned the Hurricane Center is more than likely going to continue to split the difference between the tropical model suite members. As most everyone knows by now as Ernesto continues to intensify in the Caribbean a more northerly track will become possible However, for whatever reason, some of the more reliable models are continuing to show little to no development as Ernesto continues moving west-northwestward toward the Yucatan Peninsula. This is somewhat of a mystery, and this is also being confirmed in the Hurricane Center discussion. They're not completely sure why the models are not intensifying the storm more as it begins to move very close to Jamaica and to the south of Cuba. And to further complicate this, you can see that on the visible satellite imagery, Ernesto really does not look all that bad this afternoon. We've got a convective flare-up, and this is one of many that has occurred near the center of circulation within the last 6 to 12 hours. Now, it's somewhat difficult to determine exactly where the center is located underneath this convective canopy, but overall, you see the outflow is fanning out more and more in all quadrants, so this is a good indicator that the wind shear is no longer such a detriment as it has been over the past several days, and also the dry air is being pushed away from the center as these convective flare-ups continue to occur. As we take a more regional view of the Atlantic Basin water vapor, you can see there is a very large upper level low over the central and eastern Gulf of Mexico, and the tropical disturbance that was located just to the east of Florida is just a little too close to this upper level low, so it's dealing with southwest vertical wind shear, and it's also dealing with some northerly shear from the upper level low located just to its east, so no development is anticipated near the Bahamas. But down toward the south, Ernesto is now located between all of these upper level lows and we've got upper level ridging instead being the main highlight over here in the Central Caribbean to the south of Hispaniola. As we observe the latest wind shear streamline analysis from the University of Wisconsin, this looks like a fairly favorable pattern for steady intensification with that upper level low located well to the northwest and you've got very good ventilation over the Central Caribbean with an upper level ridge beginning to intensify directly over the tropical cyclone and as a result we see that the wind shear values are generally less than 5 to 10 knots now and the upper level ridge is likely to follow tropical storm Ernesto into the northwest Caribbean where as you see here this is the location of some of the greatest tropical cyclone heat content out of anywhere else in the Atlantic Basin so as long as the storm maintains a very tight and well-defined inner core then there's no reason to believe that this system is going to weaken. In fact, we will have to monitor for the potential of any rapid intensification as Ernesto begins to approach the Yucatan Peninsula. I can almost guarantee that if it wasn't for the latest runs from the dynamical models, the Hurricane Center would probably place their forecast track a little bit more toward the north and show more in the way of intensification before the tropical storm leaves the West Caribbean. But as you can see here, even the latest run from the CMC model, which is usually far too aggressive, is not showing quite that much intensification until the storm moves out of the Yucatan and into the southwest Gulf of Mexico. As a result of the more conservative forecast, you can see by 84 hours the storm 
is suppressed a little bit more toward the south compared to what the previous CMC runs were indicating, despite the fact that we still have mid-level troughing being indicated here along the north central Gulf Coast. So the concern is still that the models may be underplaying Tropical Storm Ernesto in the West Caribbean. If they are, then the storm could be located a bit more toward the north by this time, and the fear is that it would still begin to feel the impacts of this trough, and that is why we still cannot rule out the central and western Gulf of Mexico from being impacted from this storm. The CMC is not an exception either. This is the 117 hour 500 millibar forecast from the GFS. You can clearly see what is Tropical Storm Ernesto, or possibly even Hurricane Ernesto, over the central portion of the Yucatan, but as we look toward the north, there is a lot of troughing over the lower Mississippi Valley, and there is an another reinforcing shot coming out of the Midwest, and as we set the remainder of the forecast into motion, this trough is forecast to continue diving south along the eastern periphery of a mid-level ridge that has been centered over the central plains for the better half of this summer. If Ernesto becomes captured underneath this ridge, then it is likely to continue moving west or northwest somewhere between Mexico and maybe even extreme deep south Texas, but there are still major question marks as to what the intensity of the mid-level ridging will be out across the central Gulf of Mexico. Finally, there is one or two interesting developments with the latest run of the ECMWF model. In prior runs, the ECMWF was showing a decoupling between the low-level circulation and the mid-level circulation, thus implying some weakening with Ernesto as it moves toward the Yucatan, but today's run shows a little bit more in the way of organization and a solid tropical storm landfall by the time the storm moves just to the south of Cancun and Cozumel as early as Wednesday morning. So the storm is forecast to hold together a little bit more than prior runs, at least in the short term, but it's still not strong enough to feel the effects of the troughing over the southeast United States. So as we go into days 5 and 6, the storm is forecast to move into the Bay of Campeche before moving inland. Also, this is the latest look at the sea level pressure and 500 millibar overlay from the European model. And as we saw with the GFS and CMC, as Ernesto begins to near the Yucatan, we still see that the ridging is a little bit weaker here out across the southeast United States as compared to the core of the ridging out toward the west over the central and western plains and the ridging out across the subtropical Atlantic. By day four and day five, the weakness becomes even more prevalent as we've got more long wave troughing energy moving into the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley. But with Ernesto forecast to remain a tropical storm or less, at least in this model, once again, the storm is just too weak to feel the effects of this troughiness out across the eastern two-thirds of the United States. Slight adjustments have also been made within the ECMWF ensemble average. By 48 hours, you can see that most of the ensembles agree with Ernesto being placed just to the south of Jamaica. And as we go into days three and four, however, the ensembles have shifted a tad north compared to yesterday. And you've got some of the ensembles taking the system a little bit closer toward Cancun. And as we go deeper into the forecast period, we're now looking at days six and seven. We've got more models now taking the storm closer toward the Texas and Louisiana coast. Although with all that being said, the ensemble average you can still see is taking the storm predominantly toward northern Mexico. So what are some things to look for over the next 36 hours? Well, for one, a more steadily intensifying Ernesto, if that were to occur then Ernesto could pass a little bit closer toward the island of Jamaica. And also, everyone in Jamaica right now should be bracing for tropical storm or even minimal hurricane impacts. So please go ahead and do that before the conditions begin to go downhill. And if it does take that closer track toward Jamaica, then this could also be a long-range indicator that the storm will eventually be so far toward the north that some of the troughs here along the central Gulf Coast in the four to six day period could be more of a steering factor than is currently being modeled and what is being shown by the official Hurricane Center forecast track. Now having said all of this though, as of right now it's very difficult to go against the model consensus, that being the Yucatan Peninsula, followed by a track more toward the Bay of Campeche or Western Gulf, but again there's still just a lot of uncertainty and we cannot discount the Central Gulf solution just yet. In terms of the two main scenarios, one of those will probably be decided here within the next 36 to 48 hours because the northern solution is dependent on Ernesto doing a lot here within the next couple of days in terms of strengthening. And we will see what happens here, but we will make the adjustments as needed. 
And you can stick with us here at 28storms.com and the Hurricane Tracker app for more video updates and discussions as this tropical storm evolves.